If you can believe it, Apex Legends has been out for more than 10 seasons now, and if you are just starting to play the game, or if you're looking for ways to improve your game, then look no further, as today we're going to go over 24 tips and tricks to make you a better player. There's a ton of things you can do to win more gunfights, and today we're going to go over a little bit of everything to help you win out just a bit more. If you enjoyed this video, or if you want to support me, hit that like button, and let's waste no more time and jump right into it. First up, we are going to have door play in Apex Legends. Playing off of doors can be a great tactic to increase your survivability in Apex Legends. Most players will simply sit behind a door and hold that door while popping a healing item. However, if multiple access points are around, meaning the enemy could come from either side and you aren't quite sure where they may come from, try standing in the middle of the door so you can move to either side and then shut that door, preventing them from tagging you. You can also wait for a healing item to get about 50 to 75% of the way done and then commit to a side. This way you can wait a little bit longer to track that enemy before committing to one side or the other of that doorway. Second in this, we are going to have my favorite tip that I mention quite often, and this is going to be armor swapping. Armor swapping is simple. Just swap your armor off of death boxes or other armors on the ground. It's a simple tip to increase your life and extend your survivability again in Apex Legends. And you could swap this for any type of armor. You could be dropping your red Evo for a white armor if the situation does call for it. However, this time I want to also mention a bonus tip that applies if you are in a sweatier rank match or just an end game with a lot of teams around. This is going to be armor dropping. Pull armors from the death boxes and leave them on the ground. This allows you to more easily swap armors and this quick boost of life can be really stunning to enemies as they will not expect you to come back around that corner with a full armor ready to fight. The next tip is one of the hardest thing to learn for less experienced players, and this is gonna be hip firing and the importance of it. The biggest question to ask yourself is when to do it and what guns benefit the most from it. The honest answer is it's something that you should be doing quite often and hip firing your weapons can be extremely deadly at close ranges and is way more reliable than aiming down sights. There's a few guns to keep in mind. The flatline is nasty at close range hip fire. It's one of my favorite hybrid weapons that I like to roll with. Other great contenders are two shotguns, the Eva and the Peacekeeper, as they do not have any difference in pellet spread, whether you're aiming down sights or hip firing. And beyond this, the Volt and the R99 can be solid options as well, because they are a bit easier to connect to enemies when you are up close and personal. Beyond this though, most weapons have great hip firing when you aren't moving, and this is a tip that you should be aware of if it does call for it in your games. Grenades are so important in Apex Legends, and it's something you should never be forgetting about. This is one thing I see players sleeping on the most. They will take too much ammo or extra healing items and just simply forget about one simple grenade. Try to always have at least one. There might be no better item to get enemies out of cover and force movement to break doors, apply pressure on downed or knocked enemies, prevent pushes, open fights with damage, and the possibilities are nearly endless. Here's one way to use each grenade in Apex Legends. First, we're going to have vert frag grenades or vertical frag grenades. This technique is pretty popular and effective at pushing enemies off of height, and it can be a great way to make sod plays off of this. A great way to practice vert nades is in the firing range. You can test out different angles to understand the arc of frag grenades. Try to throw some of these vert frags on the bots, and once you get that arc down, it will become much easier to replicate this in game. Second, we are going to have arc stars, and this really is going to come down to opening fights with arc stars. Enemies that are idle or not moving make for easy targets and getting a nice stick on the enemy can be a great way to make a quick work of them and even their teammates if they are bunched up together. And finally, Thermites might be the most versatile of the bunch. They can finish off knocked enemies, prevent pushes, block areas, weed out enemies behind cover, blow up doors, and much more. Try to always have a grenade because it will help you out a ton in your fights. Our next tip is going to be a simple one, and this is just taking too many healing items. And I do not mean shields, I mean actual syringes and medkits. If we think about this logically, when you get tapped by an enemy in a fight, the first thing to go is your shields. Due to this, and in my recommendation, you do not need more than four syringes and two medkits at any time. I will almost never go through more than this, and enemies that I am looting after fights almost always have these healing items. Save that inventory space for more grenades, batteries, cells, or ammo. Moving on, we have something that is less about actual gun skill or ability skill, and this is going to be more about game knowledge. What separates pros from the casuals isn't just incredible gun skill, but it is knowledge of the game. This means movement, who the opponent is, and what they are doing. If you are lacking some game sense or control of your game, take charge of your game. What I mean by this is to not sit idly by, but to make a play, and not just any play, but a play that shows that you are in charge. 
I figured it would be worth highlighting a specific example here on World's Edge. You'll notice here I'm running RE45 with a Peacekeeper. I've been having a tough time with loot this game. We have really been running and gunning all game long. I haven't had no time to loot at all. I put a couple shots on this Mirage and then I'm instantly pushing up because I do see he backs off. It gives me an opening to make a play. I make quick work of him with the RE45 and then a Peacekeeper. You're going to notice here I'm going to get some quick heals off to keep me refreshed. I know there's two more enemies. I put a couple shots into the down guy to see if the enemies are going to peek because I am shooting that down enemy. Then I put my drone down to heal up my teammate. And at this time, we are going to make a push to finish these guys because the zone is closing. We have no more time. I get a nice PK shot on the Wraith. I miss a couple shots. I am then waiting for that Wraith to peek again because she did get me very low. And I put a great 90 damage PK shot into her down her. I know she's not flashing that knockdown, which kind of signals to me that she probably has a gold. I was right. I finish her off. I take the armor and I'm instantly going over, helping out my teammate with the octane. We finish that octane and then I'm instantly rotating in. I'm popping a couple syringes to make sure I do not get finished by that zone. All in all here, you'll notice I am taking charge. I am making the advancement plays. All this is really about making sure that I am playing the game I want to play. I'm not playing into their hand. They're really playing into my hand and they don't even understand it. Moving on though, our next tip has a bit to do with the previous tip and this is to not panic. I know it can be tough. Final two squads, you're down two to three or one on two and the panic sets in. I get asked this often, how do I get less nervous or panic less in game? The truth is that it comes in time. The best way to develop this is to put yourself in those engagements and test your skills and your patience. Patience is a huge factor of Apex. You do not need to run down the throat of every enemy. I'm looking at you, Octane. This is especially the case in endgame fights. Wait for an opening, keep your cool. Another thing I wanna briefly mention is panicking in the ring. The ring really does not become a threat till the third zone ends and you do not need to rush out of the ring as long as you do have a few healing items and you are properly equipped. Take a second, rotate around the team that might be edge camp in the ring or take a little bit longer to loot those boxes from a fight that you just had. Let us now talk about the gold items in Apex Legends and who really benefits from these items more than others. First, the gold knockdown. To be honest, this doesn't really matter quite as much as the other items in the game, but you may want to give this to Mirage as he does have some invisibility when he is knocked. If he starts to pop that self-revive right away, he does this while being invisible, and this can help him get that revive off a little bit better than the other legends. Next, we're going to have gold armor. The gold armor really excels in the hands of aggressive playmakers. Any aggressive legend that can get a quick shield cell off can excel in playmaking with big plays while also staying healthy. Certain legends like Octane, Pathfinder, Wraith all have fairly aggressive playstyles. Of course, though, really any legend can be played aggressively, and if you are that type of player, then don't sleep on those quick 50 shield heals with that gold body armor. The gold backpack, though, might be one of the best items in all of Apex. The ability to get a teammate up that is useful can't be underestimated. Because of this, any legend that has any revive capabilities will benefit from this gold backpack. This means Gibraltar with that Dome Shield, Lifeline with her passive revive, Mirage with his invisible revive. Secondary legends could be that Bangalore or a Caustic with their smoking gas because you can revive enemies with a little bit of cover. Finally, the gold helmet reduces ability cooldowns for every legend in the game, and this is pretty obvious that it is useful. The only legend that really doesn't benefit from this as much as some other legends is going to be Octane because Octane already has that tactical that does come back pretty much instantly. This next tip is definitely catered towards you newer players out there. Apex has a very long time to kill compared to some of the other shooters on the market. And because of this, communication is crazy important. As someone who spends countless hours solo queuing in his matches, teamwork can be tough with random players. Luckily, we have one of the best pinging systems in all of gaming right now. It is there for a reason, so be sure to use it if your randoms or yourself aren't chatting it up in Apex Legends. If you are new to Apex, some basic functions that you may be unaware of that are pretty incredible is to ping your ultimate from the inventory when it is ready, pinging your weapon when needing more ammo, or pinging any attachment on your gun if you do need that attachment. Of course, there is that ping wheel where you can communicate with your team as to what you're thinking about, defending an area, looking at a spot for enemies to rotate through, or just trying to move around. Another pretty simple tip that players don't utilize enough is the act of meleeing at the end of fights when your magazine is out of ammo. If you hit someone say 150 out of 175 or 180 out of 200, it is way faster to bop them with a punch rather than staring at them trying to panic reload and seeing who is going to get the shot off first like some 1960s western movie. This is especially true if the gun has a long reload. Don't be afraid to empty your mag and then bop them in the nose with a melee. If you are enjoying this video, if you have any questions, be sure to hop over to Twitch where I do stream nearly daily. I would love to answer any of your Apex questions or just chat with you about gaming, and I appreciate your support.
Our next tip has to do with weaponry in Apex Legends. We all want to use the best guns and the best gun combos out there in Apex Legends, but getting those isn't always possible. A great player will learn how to use every weapon with effectiveness because no matter how good you are with that R99 or R301, sometimes it just doesn't matter because you cannot get those weapons. Kind of like what I was having earlier with that RE45 and the Peacekeeper. Sometimes you can't get your optimal loadout. If it was me, I would love to get that R301 with the EVA every time, but I can't always do that. Practice in the firing range with what weapons you are weak with, and even in-game, pick up those weapons that you don't normally use because it will make you a better, well-rounded player. This tip might be the biggest difference in winning or losing fights. This is to capitalize off of moments in-game. What I mean by this is if something happens in your favor, you absolutely need to make a play off of it. The more you capitalize in-game, the better you will become. So when do you make a big push? Well, this could be a number of things. Cracking an enemy and breaking their shields, getting massive damage on multiple enemies with a big grenade. There's a lot of ways to capitalize on fights. Let us go over a quick example for you right here. In this particular instance, I am switching up the way I'm playing. Today, I was playing Fuse, and at this time, I figured, let's make a big play. We are down to the final two squads. I'm absolutely unloading on them with my grenades, with my tacticals, and my ultimate. You'll notice I get big damage, and I actually am burning them with my ultimate ability. After this big damage, I continue to fire shots on them. They walk back into the fire, burning them again, and I'm absolutely destroying them as a team. I get one knocked, and then I'm going to capitalize on this play. I move up. I'm launching a couple grenades to continue to get kind of pressure on them. I can notice there's one self-reviving at the end. I briefly ignore her because I do want to focus on the alive player. The player queues away. Then I finish the lifeline who is self-reviving. And then I go over and finish that wraith. We make pretty quick work of them. All in all, I had big damage and I capitalized off that big damage. Going in tandem with the previous tip, this does not mean you need to push everyone. And this is especially true in ranked Apex Legends. Choosing your fights is absolutely critical to winning games. You can't choose to fight every team and make it out every single time. Again, in higher end ranked games and really any ranked game, depending on your skill level, you need to be mindful of who is around you and who is potentially going to try to make a play off of you by third partying you if you do choose to engage a different team. At the end of the day, be smart about who you are choosing to fight and if you are unsure about making a play, it is better to make that play rather than playing idly. Playing passively does not make you a better player, so be sure to try out new things and make that play. Keeping with the last two tips, third partying in Apex Legends is going to be the biggest playmaker out there. It is also the most frustrating thing to go up against. So let's talk about a few things when it does come to third partying in Apex Legends. First off, if you are trying to get that win and there are three teams left in the game, being the first of those three final teams to engage in a fight will probably mean an uphill battle. Good teams and good players know to wait for the other teams to fight it out and then to capitalize on that. It's not always feasible, but if you can, beat the team that does that third partying. It will air in your favor most of the time. Preventing third partying is easier said than done though, but let's go over a few ways to try and prevent yourself from being a target of a third party. First up, when finishing a fight, always expect to be third partied. Armor swap immediately if it is possible and be on the lookout for a push. Following this, audio in Apex can be pretty bad, but one thing that is generally very obvious is just how far gunshots can be heard, and this does cause teams to gravitate towards people that are already fighting. The best way to prevent an active third party while you are in the engagement is to try and finish that fight quickly and cleanly. Don't engage a fight when you are not ready. Try to make that fight quick. Try to make quick work of them to give yourself the maximum amount of time to prepare for that next team that's going to rotate in. Moving on, movement in Apex Legends is the real deal. There's a ton of advanced movement techniques out there from tap strafing to bunny hopping, super glide, stealth walking, crouch strafing, corner peeking, zipline bouncing, and wall jumping, just to name a few. The more you learn about movement in Apex Legends, the better you are going to become. One technique I encourage you to learn is going to be wall jumping because I think it's the easiest of the more advanced movement techniques in the game, and it's pretty fun to do. Wall jumping is exactly what it sounds, jumping off of walls to get a boost in movement speed and to allow yourself to traverse areas without having to climb and go through that animation. Wall jumping can be pretty great to open in fights as well as you will jump onto enemies virtually silent and move through the air at different angles that they really just aren't going to expect. To perform a wall jump, simply run out of wall, slide and jump into that wall. As you are about to make contact with that wall, release your movement stick or key, and then hit jump to jump off of said wall, and then begin to redirect yourself. Practice wall jumping in the firing range to get those basics down, and then when you are rotating around the maps, when there is no fighting, when you have some downtimes, this will allow you to always be improving your skills. 
Tip for our sweet 16 is going to be using weapons you are not comfortable with. This goes back to the weaponry tip, but this time I want to emphasize using the firing range as a part of your daily playing routine. A quick two to five minutes in the range before every play session can be so beneficial to the health of your play session. Not only will you get warmed up without having to worry about enemies shooting back, it will help you learn new weapons you are not comfortable with. I, however, do not recommend you spend too long practicing here. In-game playtime is always superior to practicing on the range. When you are warming up, do it without any barrel stabilizers. If you can master the weapons in this form, it will just be easier when you do get that barrel later on. I recommend trying a mix of tap firing weapons and spray weapons at all various ranges as well. Moving on, something that we all have to do from time to time is a one on two or a one on three fight with our backs up against the wall. How to take on teams like this is all about being pretty creative in your fights. The first tip I recommend for you to do is to create separation between the enemy players. If you can single out players one at a time, this makes it way more advantageous in your favor as it is a straight up one on one for a brief moment. This goes back to something we were talking about earlier and this is patience. Be patient and don't overextend yourself. You don't necessarily need to rush your fight if you can create room, it will help you out a ton. Second to this is to again, choose your engagements. Every time you go into a 1v2 or 3, you're obviously at a disadvantage. And if you can't open a fight by taking down a player, so this means a big grenade paired up with some shots and getting a great one mag at someone, then you will be able to massively benefit in your overall fight. If you haven't noticed by now, most of the tips in this video are really about building off of one another to really make yourself a well-rounded player. Let's go over a couple solo situations here to really hammer home what I am talking about. This first one right here, I get an absolutely incredible R99 mag on this player. I knock him. Shortly after, I'm keeping track of where the enemy is. I'm waiting for this Mirage to actually play into my hand. He's knocking down the door because he does think I'm healing up. He knocks down the door. I make quick work of them. Again, right here, I opened with a one mag on an enemy player to make it a 1v1. Right after this, I am again doing the same thing. I'm opening with an almost one mag on this fuse that is ratting in this building. I knock them. I am then keeping track of where the enemies are, what they are doing. I'm making sure that fuse isn't getting up. And then I again do a 1v1 against the Pathfinder because I did make quick work of them making it two 1v1 fights. This kind of does go back to team play. If they were sticking together and if they were coordinating well on me, I would have never been able to really do at least that second fight because I was so low. If the Pathfinder was there, I wouldn't have made it out of there alive. Next, we have a few things to talk about with settings. The first overall tip I want to give you is to not make massive sensitivity or setting adjustments. It is much better, in my opinion, to fine tune your settings with small adjustments over time to really make the most out of your improvements so you aren't completely throwing your games with huge, unfamiliar changes. Settings, for the most part, are fairly unique, and while other players can give you a good baseline of some good settings, be sure to think of yourself and try out different things so you are really catering to your individual needs. Finally, what sense you run doesn't really matter that much as long as you are not really low or really high, you will be able to adapt to pretty much any sensitivity, so do not overthink this too much. The final couple settings and things to note is that you should turn off closed death boxes upon damage. This will allow you to loot and get that armor swap if you do get shot shortly before grabbing it. Second to this, in my opinion, turn off hit markers. No hit markers means less visual obstruction on screen and you will still get that feedback through the damage numbers showing up on screen. Finally, if you haven't realized, almost every platform can adjust their field of view and I recommend setting this to something like 90 or higher. This will just allow you to better see your surroundings and it will help you track enemies a little bit easier. Next, we have some advice on how to get higher kill games. High kill games really comes down to a lot of luck and managing your drop. Dropping in a hot spot is almost a must if pushing those 20 bombs and the following spots on these maps are my recommendations if you do want higher kill games. Kings Canyon, you got Market, Capacitor, Gauntlet, and Salvage. Olympus, you're going to have Estate, Energy Depot, and Fight Night, and sometimes Oasis. World's Edge, you're going to have Fragment, West and East. And now you will have the new locations known as Climatizer and Lava Siphon, as many players are checking out those new areas. Other than this, pushing high kill games is really all about being aggressive and taking every chance you can get a fight within reason. And all in all, it is going to come down to a lot of luck because you do need the game to really just be feeding you enemy players at the right moments so you don't get overwhelmed and so you are getting enough kills in your game. What we have been talking about so far is always taking fights and it is what we are looking to do. If you want another way to be a bit more effective in your fights, it is to enter the fight creatively. This is generally known to me as the approach of an engagement. 
This goes back to using movement techniques like wall jumping or making the most of movement legend abilities. This could be ulting in with launch pads or zip lines using Horizon's lift or a wraith portal, maybe a Bangalore smoke. There's a ton of options with almost every legend. If you have no movement legend, have no fear because sometimes just entering a fight with a climb that is a little bit different than someone would expect is enough to get a drop on an enemy player. The next tip has a bit less to do with actual game mechanics, and this is more of a PSA for some legends you may want to think about using if you are a new player and you are looking for some crazy good legends that are easy to use. Some legends come and go into the meta, but consistent great pickups for the past few seasons have been Bloodhound, Octane, Bangalore, and even Loba. All of these legends are very simple to use and will help you focus on gunplay, which is the best skill to focus on when you are first starting out. These legends also have some great team usefulness with Loba's Black Market, Bangalore's Smoke, Octane's Pads, and Bloodhound's Scans. On the other side of the coin, we are going to have a few legends that are great if you want a bit more of a challenge in your gameplay. At the moment, certain powerhouse legends that require more skill to use effectively are going to be Gibraltar, Pathfinder, and Wraith. Gibraltar is one of the most insane legends in the game. He has a crazy amount of usefulness. Not only can he take a lot of damage with that gun shield and the fact that he is fortified, his dome shield is also super useful and the ultimate is quite good at a lot of things like preventing pushes or getting teams to move. Pathfinder also is a solid choice, but his grapple does take a lot of finessing to use at the higher tier level. Finally, we do have Wraith. Wraith has a ton of usefulness and escape artistry with her Q, and she is super useful for end game rotations with cover and safety by using that portal. Wraith has a crazy amount of survivability, and she really can reset fights over and over with that Q ability, so don't sleep on it. All three of these legends may or may not be the best of the best, but they are a few of the recommended legends I like to give from time to time. We already talked about getting higher kill games, but how about dropping high damage games? High kill games generally mean higher damage games, but there are a few tips I can give if you are just looking to farm those 4K damage badges. First, shoot everything. Farming higher damage games means you need to be tapping those enemies across the map and really trying to get a little burst of damage at a time consistently. Second to this, a legend like Rampart with those Anth Walls isn't too bad of an idea if you are trying to get a little damage boost. Thirdly, we are going to have finishing your knocked opponents or really any knocked opponent. This is a free 100 damage because this damage does count towards your overall damage counter. Finally, just a few weapon recommendations for pushing damage. My personal favorite is the G7 Scout. This thing can absolutely beam at mid range to long range and is even useful at the close quarter situations in a pinch. The complement to this is really the 30-30. I'm not a huge fan of this weapon but some stand by it and I think with its little bullet velocity buff it is a solid choice finally there is the tried and true r301 and flatline both of these weapons have a lot of versatility between close medium and even long ranges if used properly so what's the best way to improve don't play scared make plays try new things make that push that you're hesitant on doing greatness never came from sitting in the corner waiting for everything to die down as actual great players are competing and getting better i'm a firm believer that winning more games does not make you a better player again winning more games doesn't make you a better player and dying off of spawn earlier on in the game means you might actually be improving rather than sitting idly by and getting third or fourth place or second place think critically about your losses what could have you done better was it a bad drop was it no loot something out of your control maybe but overall, think critically and don't be scared to make a big play. Getting better at Apex can sometimes feel like an impossible task since the game has been out for a couple years now. But if you are ever looking for someone to play with or chat with about Apex, hop into our community Discord. We have a ton of guides and tip videos on the channel, so check that out if you need more. And if you want any more content, links to my Twitter socials are all down below. Drop a comment down below and let me know what's your biggest struggle in Apex. I would love to hear it so it can help me cater my content towards helping you out in your game. For me, personally, I will say it's absolutely overextending and my aim. I think both could use a little bit more work. Till next time though, I will see you live in the Twitch streams. Good luck, legends.